Holy Spirit. Amen. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The people of Israel knew the grace and mercy of God. It was for them. It brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It broke their chains of bondage. They saw his wondrous works as he rained plague after plague upon Pharaoh who hardened his heart against the Lord. Pharaoh whose heart was hardened by the Lord. The people of Israel saw these wondrous works. And so when the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And they shall take the blood from the lamb and they shall paint the doorposts of their homes for the Lord will pass over. The people of Israel heard and they believed. And by faith they acted upon that belief. Because they had seen the wondrous works of the Lord, they knew that he was gracious and merciful. Certainly, the people of Israel would forget the wondrous works of the Lord. The people of Israel would forget the grace and mercy of God. This is why the Lord set up this Passover feast for them as an eternal remembrance throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast so that they would remember God's grace and his mercy once delivered to his people. Now you know the story. It wasn't long after the people of Israel left the land of Egypt. It wasn't even long enough for the welts on their wrists and their ankles from the slaves' chains could have healed. That they were already grumbling against Moses and against God. And grumbling for ridiculous things. Would that we were back in Egypt by the meat pots where there was garlic and there was lentil and we had food and there was bread aplenty. What ridiculous. When they had seen his grace and his mercy poured out for them. And yet the Lord continued to show his grace and mercy. He provided food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Even when the people of Israel were faithless, God remained faithful. Even when they grumbled against him, accusing him, bringing them out in the wilderness to kill them. The Lord remained faithful. So the Lord remains faithful to you. The Lord has washed you. He has brought you through the Red Sea waters on dry ground in holy baptism. And in that same holy baptism, the Lord God Almighty, through his word and by his promise, has painted doorposts of your heart with the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that you might not die but live and recount the works of the Lord. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. And yet, all of us have gone astray. Like wandering sheep, we have gone astray from God's grace and his mercy. Time and again, we turn our backs on God's grace and God's mercy. Time and again, we fall into sin. We fall into grumbling. We fall into forgetfulness and faithlessness. And yet the Lord has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. And so he has called you again to this altar. Where you receive not just bread and wine. But the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of all of your sins. And you come to this altar. And I with hands stained by sin. 
take up the body of Christ and place it between your lips, which have spoken terrible and evil things. And the Lord is gracious and merciful. He does not turn from us as we deserve, but he comes to us again and again. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. And so on this holy Thursday night, we gather around the table of that last supper and we receive from our Lord Jesus Christ this true and eternal pledge and promise of His grace and His mercy. We receive from our Lord Jesus Christ His body and His blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As we sing in the hymn, no blinding sign we ask, no wonder from above. Lord, help us place our trust alone in your unswerving love. Part of the reason why the crosses are veiled during this most holy time on the church's calendar is to fix our eyes not on things that are seen, but on those things that are unseen. And our Lord does not give us a blinding sign, does he? A little bit of frankly cheap wine. It's nothing special. A little piece of stale unleavened bread. It certainly isn't a feast. But given by the Lord's hand, it is the medicine of immortality. Given by the Lord's hand, it strengthens and fortifies your faith. Given by the Lord's hand, it is the grace and mercy of God for you. And so we receive it with glad and joyful hearts, for it is from our Lord Jesus Christ. We receive it not doubting, but believing, lest we fall into the judgment of those who receive the body and blood without discerning the body and blood, as the Apostle Paul writes, for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. No, we receive this gift as Christ intended by faith in his unchanging eternal word. By faith in in that unchanging eternal word who put on flesh and lived amongst us, even Jesus Christ. We live by this faith that he has created in us in the waters of holy baptism. We live by this faith that he has strengthened us with through the words of holy absolution that you heard this night spoken directly to you, a remembrance of your baptism. For as we began this Lenten journey with an ashen cross on our foreheads, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It is this night that our Lord Jesus Christ washes the ash from our heads and cleanses us with his holy promises, with his holy absolution. And so, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And you know love. Lord is gracious and merciful. You know love, for love has come to you from this altar, from this font. Love has come to you from Jesus Christ, our Savior. 